Welcome back to the Jake Beckett Show podcast. I'm your host, Jake Beckett, back in the house for another great episode. I've got a great agenda on deck for you this week. Um, I want to cover several different topics. But the first thing, breaking news today, and I'm sure this will progress over this weekend, uh, but as I predicted last week on the podcast, Daniel Penny was placed under arrest today and charged with manslaughter in New York City by a woke, radical, left-wing, Soros-funded DA there in Manhattan. And, you know, to me, I, as I said, last week, it was the big news story of last week. I addressed it. I, I said, and I, I tweeted about this instantly, immediately after it happened. As soon as I saw that video, I knew this was the inevitable result. And it, it's really sad to see these things happen um, as we move into the new dark age in this country and around the world with the fall of the West and the fall of Christendom. You're going to see the, these things continue to happen, and they're not going to be easy to explain. People are going to bury their heads in the sand, and they're going to pretend that these things aren't happening. They're going to pretend that everything is going to be okay. Look, I, I'd love to sit here and tell you that everything is going to work out well. I'd love to sit here and tell you that um, there's going to be a big backlash and that um, California and New York and these crazy left-wing cities are going to come to their senses and they're going to they're going to rise out of their squalor and realize the error of their ways and they're they're going to wake up one day and vote Republican and we're going to come in there and, and fix everything. That's just not the way it's going to work out. I, I was at a political conference a few weeks ago, and there were there were people there from all over the country, uh, activists, legislators, uh, you know, people who are who are actively involved in politics, and you know, smart people, people who who share our values, who believe what we believe, and but even even in private conversations with them, when you when you talk to them about these issues. And you say something like, hey, um, you know California is not going to go red again, right? Like, you know that New York is not going to vote Republican. You know that Texas is going to go blue within a couple of election cycles. Like, you know it's going to get worse. People, they, they just look at you with a blank stare. They, they just, they're, they're either unwilling or unable to comprehend the trajectory that we are currently on right now. And just to recap, in case you missed last week's podcast, Daniel Penny is a 24-year-old Marine Corps veteran um, who, who served his country, who was a squad leader with a Marine inf Infantry Platoon. He's the son of a career New York City law enforcement officer. And he was riding the subway where he encountered 30-year-old Jordan Neely, a career criminal, a de deranged violent bum who had been arrested over 40 times in his miserable life, uh, including once for uh, assault and battery of an elderly woman and once for attempting to kidnap and, and do God what else to a seven-year-old girl. Yeah, that was, that was who Jordan Neely was. And the media, of course, are, are evil sick, depraved, sadistic media is trying to portray him as this innocent bystander, this Michael Jackson impersonator. Yeah, in his more lucid moments a decade ago, he would do Michael Jackson impersonations on the subway system. People in New York knew who this guy was, people who ride the subway encounter these types of people all the time, and anyone in their honest moments will tell you privately that they, they steer very clear away from these people because they are unpredictable. They're violent. They're deranged. Um, people get harmed and in some cases killed by these folks constantly. And, of course, the utterly depraved New York government and these, these big city governments do nothing about it. It's the phenomenon known as anarcho-tyranny. And, of course, Daniel Penny, people like him, good Samaritans, who want to step in and subdue people like this, protect innocent people, they're the ones who are eventually arrested and 
will surely be convicted. I, I don't have any good news to deliver to you on this. Daniel Penny is going to be lynched by the Manhattan DA. He's going to be lynched by what surely will be a left-wing jury. You know, people, I, I see people on social media who are, you know, I had a couple of posts on this that blew up and people will say, oh, you know, uh, just wait for the evidence to come out. You know, wait until the jury sees the evidence. Well, I mean, tell that to Sergeant Daniel Perry, who, you know, like Daniel Penny, um, you know, D D D Sergeant Daniel Perry uh, was active duty army, uh, who was just convicted for murder by an Austin, Texas jury. Uh, he was he was lynched on these charges of murder by a you guessed it Soros funded radical left district district attorney. Luckily for Sergeant Perry, he lives in what is for now a red state Texas, where the Attorney General uh, Ken Paxton and the Governor Greg Abbott have at least uh, they've committed publicly to expediting a pardon for this man. But Daniel Penny in New York City is not going to be so lucky. So there's no red state governor to save him. Um, there's nothing that really anyone can do at this point. I, I was advocating for Daniel Penny to flee New York City. I think that's what he should have done. Uh, you know, he decided to surrender to the authorities and, and face the legal process, if you can even call it that. But, I mean, look, I'm, I'm not going to blow smoke and, and try to paint rainbows. This guy is probably going to prison for a very long time. He's facing over 20 years on these manslaughter charges. It's the, the racial dynamics of the case have basically already sealed his fate. I mean, in, in, in Kyle Rittenhouse's case, you know, he killed white people who were trying to murder him. Uh, he was barely acquitted, you know, and Sergeant Daniel Perry in, in Austin, Texas, you know, the, the person who leveled an AK 47, um, in his face was white and he was still convicted of murder. And so when you've got a, a, a racially charged situation like what Daniel Penny is facing in New York City, I, I, I'm sorry, it's game over. I, I, I wish that you know we, we could sit here and pretend otherwise, but if, if you believe there is any other outcome that is coming down the pike in this case, you are delusional. You're deluding yourself. And if you, if you want to be deluded, look, if you want to go somewhere else and be deluded, be my guest. There are plenty of other options, but I'm only going to speak the truth to you. As long as I'm on this air and doing this podcast and, and, and involved in the political movement for as long as that's allowed, I'm going to speak the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Okay, if you want mommy to, to, to whisper sweet nothings in your ear, there are other outlets that will do that for you consistently, day in, day out, night in, night out. You can go find that. But I suspect that you're here because you want something different. You want a different perspective. The, the current narrative about everything, even in the, the conservative ink movement, uh, it, it's not ringing true. So you're here because you're curious. You're looking for something else. I, I'm always going to give you the truth. When there is reason for optimism, I will give you reason for... I, I, will, I will share that with you. When there is reason for... I wouldn't even say pessimism. It, it, when, when there is time for just a reality check... I'm going to deliver that unabashedly, unashamedly. And, and that, that was one of the messages that I put out on social media last night that has gotten quite a bit of attention. I'm going to do a couple of segments uh, later on Newsmax about this. Is, you know, look, I was saying to all the Daniel Pennies of the world, it, you, you, can't do, you can't put yourself in this kind of a position in a blue city, especially in a blue state. You just can't do it. And, and it goes against every instinct in your bones. You know, for those of us who, who wore the uniform, who, who are in law enforcement, who served in the military, who are first responders, you know, who people who believe in putting yourself in harm's way to, to potentially sacrifice yourself, to put your, your life and limb in, in, in danger for the greater good, it goes against every instinct in our soul. But you have to, you have to be smart. You have to be tactical. I, I use the term tactical withdrawal. Now, look, if you're facing overwhelming odds in a military situation, okay, just a frontal assault is just going to get you and everyone else killed. But you have to have, you have to be prudent. You have to have some wisdom. You have to exercise some restraint. And as I said last week, my first bit of advice is to leave these areas. You have to move. You have to get out because you don't have rights in these areas. 
Okay, like the 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 Constitution, the social compact, the social kind. Con- it's dead. It's gone. It is a moot point. I, I'm sorry to say that if you're hearing this for the first time, you might get angry. You might say, "Oh, Jake, you know what about the the what about the Constitution? What about our founding fathers? What you know what about our rights? In certain areas, you don't have any rights. You just don't. I wish you did, but you don't. Okay, there's, I mean, you're living under a hostile government. That's the way you have to see yourself if you are living in a blue city, in a blue state. You are in enemy territory. You have no friends. If you get placed in a situation where it is, where it is politically expedient to lynch you, that is exactly what will happen. Don't forget, Daniel Penny, he was, he was applauded. He got a, he got a standing ovation from the people on the subway for subduing Jordan Neely. He was he was a deranged, violent bum who was harassing people. Okay, and Daniel Penny took him down. He subdued him. He, he eliminated the threat. He wasn't trying to kill him. He was just trying to subdue him. The guy ended up dying. You know, we'll see what happens with the toxicology reports. Not that it's going to matter to the DA or to the jury. They're going to convict Daniel Penny no matter what. But he, the, the guy ended up dead. And, of course, he was released immediately by the police. They didn't see any immediate reason to charge him. But the racial dynamics of this case, the video, the images, the media, the vultures in our, in our corrupt media establishment, they couldn't help themselves. They saw an opportunity. They saw an enemy in Daniel Penny, and they had to take him down. They had to make an example of him. You can't have good Samaritans doing the right thing. You can't have people protecting the innocents. Okay, the innocents are meant to be persecuted. They're meant to be harassed. Okay, and so that's, that's what I'm saying. You have to leave these areas. If, if, if there's any question in your mind that if you had to use lethal force to defend yourself and you might get rung up on murder charges, if, if there's any possibility of that in your mind, in your area, and you know where I'm talking about, you've got to leave. You have to leave. Because guess what? If, if, if you answer yes to those questions, if you might be living in one of those areas, you don't have rights. The most sacred right that, uh, the, of natural law, of, of a God-given right, is the right to defend yourself, especially to defend yourself with the type of lethal force that is being used against, against you in actuality or you know, in, a, in a reasonable set of circumstances. If you don't have the right to defend yourself with equal and opposing force, you don't have rights. You don't have rights. I, 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 I'm going to keep hammering that out there until people understand it. And, and clearly, I mean, just look, based on the, the interactions I'm seeing on social media, you know, based on conversations I have with people in real life, I mean, people just still, unfortunately, they still don't understand the nature of the situation that we're in. And, you know, that that's why I, I'm a big believer in tactical withdrawal, moving to areas that we at least have some semblance or hope of control and trying to dig something out of the dirt, trying to build something new. Because the status quo is failing. The status quo is going to get you killed. It's going to get you arrested. If you try to defend yourself or your loved ones, you're going to end up dead or in prison. That is what is happening to Daniel Penny, and that is what, it, what that is exactly what will happen to you in similar circumstances. So I'm going to keep an eye on this case. Obviously, it's it's you know it's it's going to go to trial, and, and of course the the disgusting family of Jordan Neely is out there in front of the courthouse holding a press conference with their attorneys. They they left this man to live on the streets and fend for himself for his entire life, Jordan Neely. And of course, when he gets killed, they show up with a lawyer with their hand out, looking to make a buck. It's sickening. It's sickening. These people are like vultures. These blue city politicians and the people. I mean, he, here's the bottom line. For people like Daniel Penny, like it's not worth it to put your life on the line for these people. It's just not. It's not worth it. These people hate you. This, this is not the old America that, that we have been sold. That people of a certain age have grown up in, in the expectation of living in that type of a country. That country is gone. Okay, well, and, and like it's, it's, there's about to be, I mean, there's already a permanent political class in D.C. I call it the Uniparty. 
But there's, I mean, there's not even, the, the, the pretense of opposition is even going away. I mean, yeah, there, there is an, there's an outside chance for Republicans to win in 2024. I, I'd say it's, it's substantially less than 50-50. But going forward, I mean, look at California. Look at these other, these other formerly red areas. Look at Texas, the trends in those states. Once Texas turns blue, guys, it's, it, there's a permanent Democrat supermajority in this country. It's, it's game over. There, there's, there's really no hope at the federal level after that takes place. So, I mean, everyone's, you know, you might say, oh, well, you know, what about the based Hispanics? You know, they're, they're going to they're gonna vote Republican. Like they did in California? I mean, look at California. California people. California was the home of Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan. They were solid red. They were, they were a solid red state from essentially the time of their induction into the Union in, I believe, 1850 up until 1992. That was when they went blue. Or, or maybe it was 96. It was the early 90s. Okay? I, I believe it was 92. They, they voted for H.W. Bush in, in 88. And then from 92 on, when that state turned blue, it was game over. Now it's, it's hopelessly blue. It's never going to be red. And, and, and people are trying to say that these, I mean, you see the, the other big news of the week was, um, you know, with the, the, the imminent uh, ending of Title 42, you're seeing one of these massive migrant surges across the border, our non-existent border. It, like, are those people going to vote Republican? That's the kind of delusion that is just is is frustrating for me, because what I'm seeing from our political class and from even people who are on our side, they just don't get it. They're living in a dream world. They they want to stand up and 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 talk and pretend that everything's going to be okay. That's just a giant cope. And and to me, there is nothing more cowardly than continuing down this road pretending that things are going to be different. The social contract is broken. You don't owe any more loyalty to this system. Okay, I, I encourage everyone to read the Declaration of Independence. Obviously, the Constitution is dead. It was, it was killed a long time ago. It was, it was I mean, there, there was the, the original Constitution didn't last 75 years, guys. It was, it was killed by the Civil War. And then there was another Constitution that was founded in the Civil Rights era. Okay, for people who, who, who do constitutional law and, and are in politics, like they understand that, that there, were, there, were, there, there have been several different foundings of this country. The original Constitution, the one that was passed in 1787 in, in, in Independence Hall in Philadelphia, uh, and the one that was ratified by 1789, that one lasted until the Civil War, okay? I mean, it was a good Constitution, it was a good effort, but, you know, it didn't make it 100 years, not even close. And then the Civil War brought in a new constitution, a new compact, where the federal government had control over the states. But, but before that, it was the exact opposite. The states were, were quasi-independent, quasi-sovereign entities. Okay, that, that's a discussion for a different day. I, I spoke about that on the Andrew Jackson podcast about nullification. The nullification crisis where South Carolina tried to nullify federal law. That started the Cold War that eventually led to the American Civil War. So what I'm telling you is that the, the Declaration of Independence, in my opinion, is the more, the more profound and enduring document. Because the Declaration, and it's worth a read, it's a very easy read. It's only a few paragraphs long that they list the, the 40 or so grievances against King George. I mean, those are interesting, but, but, but not really relevant to my discussion. Go read the Declaration of Independence. Because the reason why I think it is so profound and enduring, especially compared to the Constitution and everything else that's a dead letter, is that the Declaration lays out the, the specific set of circumstances whereby a, a, a rational, God-fearing people have the right to rebel against their government. The, the, the rights that a people have to, to acknowledge that the social contract is broken. Okay, without, without getting too deep into political theory, the social contract is, is essentially the modern social contract that, that Locke and others described. I mean, really, it goes back to Hobbes, but... Essentially, the social contract is we as a free people, as free men, we agree to, to give away some of our rights in exchange for a government that protects the rest of those rights. And, and the idea is that 
that arrangement will be better than the, 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 a free-for-all, than, than a, a system where there is no government. And of course, our, our Constitution, our founding, I mean, f- for most of American history, even, even past the Civil War, for most of American history up until the, the early 20th century, you could live your entire life in some areas of the country and not have any contact at all with any government, much less the federal government. I mean, just think, there was no income tax, there was very little regulation of anything. You could live on the frontier in a homestead, even in a, a relatively you know, heavily populated area, and have no contact with the government. You were living your life. We had a civil society. We had structure. Those days are over. We are living under a tyranny. Okay, And if you step out of line, if you challenge the system, if you even do good and harm someone that the Leviathan believes is on their side, the simple friend versus enemy distinction, Daniel Penny is an enemy, so he's got to go down. He's got to burn. And, and if, if you are unwilling or unable to, uh, to understand that, you're going to be the next victim. So I, I, I am imploring people. I, I'm not saying do right. I, I, I'm not saying don't do good things. I'm not saying don't try to advance the kingdom here on earth. What I'm saying is you have to be smart. You know, you know, when, when Paul was writing to the church in Rome, you know, the, 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 the book of the Bible we know is Romans, he explicitly told them, hey, you're living, you're living under the auspices of an evil government. You should not try to get in between this government and God's judgment. So, so st- stop trying to get out there and, and make a difference politically. And in these blue areas, I think that's the mindset we have to have. You, you, we can't affect change. And so any action that you take, anytime you poke your head out, you're just going to get stomped. So either leave and go to an area where you can affect change or just keep your mouth shut and try to survive. So that's, that's my advice when it comes to the Daniel Penny situation. And, and those are my thoughts on that issue. We'll continue to monitor but man, I, I, it's, it's extremely upsetting. It angers me to see how few, I mean, I, I haven't seen, I just, I tweeted this today. I haven't seen one military veteran in Congress speak out in support of Daniel Penny. These people are cowards. It's like the Black Rifle Coffee Company losers who, who came out against Kyle Rittenhouse. You know, everyone's just out there in their own little fiefdom and they, they don't want to stick up for their brothers in arms. Okay, Daniel Penny is someone who was doxxed, as I said last week. The U.S. Marine Corps gave him up. They, you know, the, the, they, they were working with regime journalists, as they always do, just like they did against certain Republican candidates in the last uh, congressional cycle. They, they doxxed Daniel Penny so the regime could find out who he was. And, and, and we have a few veterans in Congress who haven't said a damn word about Daniel Penny. No, no support. Not even a tweet, no statement, no saying, hey, this is ridiculous. And much less what I was advocating for was a, a red state legislature, a red state governor, a red state say, hey, we're going to be a haven for people like this. Daniel Penny, come on down. We're not going to extradite you. We're, we're, we're going we're to be a sanctuary state for American patriots who are trying to do the right thing and protect innocent people on a New York City subway. It makes me sick. So the, the other news this week was the, the Donald Trump town hall on CNN. I, I'll address that a little bit. But really what I want to talk about is, you know, there was, the, you, know, um, you know, that was, you know, it, it was what it was. I, I, I'm not going to get too deep into this, into this race in 2024, especially the primary. You, you, just based on my thoughts on this podcast, you, you kind of know where, where my views are. Um, you know, where we're at as a country, th- there's not much that anyone can do at the federal level, uh, you know, especially a, a Republican president. You, you would have to have the kind of will to power that is so rare these days. Um, you know, you'd have to be someone like a Nayib Bukele in El Salvador, um, you know, someone who has real courage and who is, is, is looking to, to fundamentally transform the system itself not just try to operate within the structure that the, the swamp, the deep state places before you. 
And I mean, look, there's just, I, I, I don't know. That's, that's a topic for a different podcast. What I do want to discuss though, is, is our, our good friend, Asa Hutchinson, everyone's all American. Uh, I say that as an absolute joke, of course. He was tweeting after uh, Trump's town hall on CNN. He was saying, "Oh, it was disgusting um, that that Trump, um, you know, is does not want to see victory in in, in for Ukraine. Uh, he's a, a, a Putin puppet, essentially, was the implication." And so I, I just want, yeah, I haven't really talked about about Asa Hutchinson yet. You know, former governor of Arkansas, an absolute rhino scumbag. And it's it, there are a lot of Asa Hutchinson out there. I'm not just picking on Asa, but hey, he put himself out there to run for president. And you know, I, I, I tweeted at him. I said, hey, you are you're polling at zero percent. And his only role, the only way he gets on TV, and he, he was appearing on a CNN panel. That's, that's why he was tweeting to promote that appearance. You know, he he tweeted that you know, hey, uh, he he was tweeting about his appearance on this upcoming panel. And I said, I mean, the only the only way he gets on TV is by being the 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 castrato, the house eunuch for CNN and MSNBC. I mean, he's his his job, his role in this campaign is to be the Republican who will bash Trump and DeSantis, the two front runners. Okay, that that's he's polling at zero percent. He's totally irrelevant within within the Republican Party, within the conservative movement, you know, whatever you want to call it. He's a non-entity. He's, he's not going to make it past Iowa. I hope he does. And that was the second half of my tweet. I really hope he stays in until Super Tuesday because that's when the Arkansas primary is. I really am curious to see what he would get in, in a, a GOP primary for president in the state. I mean, I, I think it, it would be single digits. Um, you know, it would be, it would be, and, and you know, there's a lot of people who, who want to come after me. Like, oh, you know, like you lost a primary. Like, what are you talking about? Okay, well, well, I was part of a, a fractured field taking on an incumbent U.S. senator, and he only got 58% against us. I got 21. I mean, there was 42% of the people in this state were voting against an incumbent. Okay, if there was only one challenger, an effective challenger, it would have been 42%. Okay, Asa Hutchinson would get less than 10%. Asa Hutchinson, if Asa Hutchinson challenged an incumbent U.S. senator in Arkansas today, he would get less than 10%. He has no support. I have more support in the state than Asa Hutchinson does. I mean, the, all, the, all these idiots who, who are commenting, saying that, you know, the, the, the math, that, oh, you know, like, who are you to say? Like, like, that was my first run against an incumbent U.S. senator. And I've got way more support than Asa Hutchinson ever would. And, and the reason, you know, one of the reasons why I like talking about Asa is because he is representative of the problem within these red states. I mean, there, there's, there's so many terrible governors of deep red states because the machine gets them in place and they have the, 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 the bonus, the, the benefit of incumbency. It's really difficult to beat them. But, you know, Asa, you know, he, he's so stupid and I, he, he was stupid. It, it hurt his legacy, but I'm really thankful that he did it because it opened the eyes of a lot of people. Really everything changed for Asa when he went on Tucker Carlson tonight, when he was still governor of Arkansas. The background is the state legislature passed a law banning uh, transgender mutilation surgeries, uh, castration, both physical castration and chemical castration via hormone therapy for minors. Asa Hutchinson, Republican governor of Arkansas, vetoed the bill. In Arkansas, we only have to have a simple majority to override a governor's veto. And so the veto was overridden. The law passed, went into law, but but Asa vetoed the law. And what was even more interesting and stupid on his case was that he decided to go on Tucker Carlson tonight and try to match wits with Tucker about the law. I mean, Asa is so stupid, he actually believed that what he was doing was conservative. He tried to say that, oh, you know, I, I'm following in the legacy of William F. Buckley and Ronald Reagan. Um, by, by not getting involved in people's health care decisions, as if Ronald Reagan was a proponent of castration for minors. You know, chemical and physical castration for minors. A apparently that's conservatism in Asa Hutchinson's book. Of course, in Arkansas, there's all kinds of law laws in the books about what minors can't do. Minors can't get a tattoo. They can't get married in most circumstances. Okay, they can't purchase alcohol. But Asa Hutchinson says, oh yeah, they should be able to chop off their genitals. 
that is that is what I am fighting against in, in a red state like Arkansas and in red states all over the country. It, it, it's just that's what we're dealing with. We have a fake phony movement led by people, absolute chumps like Asa Hutchinson. And so, yeah, I'm going to take every opportunity that I can to humiliate people like him. That's why I'm glad he's running for president. It's because, you know, hey, he's going to try to make his case for why uh, chemical castration surgery, physical castration surgery is conservative. He's going to try to make that case to Iowa and make that case around the country, and he's going to get rejected. Now, why he's doing this, I mean, I, I think it's really twofold. I think Asa is, he's delusional. Um, you know, he has a small group of people around him who, who I, I'm guessing, I mean, I know some of these people, but, um, you know, they whisper sweet nothings in his ear and tell him that he's, he's the greatest. And, um, you know, the, the backstory on the Tucker thing, I mean, he fired people over that Tucker appearance, you know, because, you know, he, he thought that he was duped. Uh, he, he thought that, um, you know, Tucker was going to take it easy on him. I mean, but that, that's, that's who Asa is as a man. I mean, he, he's not, he's not really a man. He's a coward. He's an absolute disgrace. You know, he goes on there and lights his political career on fire on Tucker Carlson tonight, and then he fires people because they booked the appearance for him. That's who Asa Hutchinson is. And I'm going to do everything that I can from, from my foxhole to ensure that he's humiliated because that's what he deserves. And we have to, in, in the limited way that we can, you know, I, I'm trying to expose people like him so that we don't keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Maybe it's too late. In, in, in many ways, it already is. We don't really have a nation anymore. We're not really, I mean, we, we don't even really have a concrete goal of something to fight for uh, on the right because there's nothing really left to conserve. We have to change our mentality to, to building something new, to forging something out of the ashes. I don't think things have gotten bad enough yet that are going to awaken enough people to give that movement critical mass. But we'll see. And, you know, in, in, until that moment happens, I'm going to be here. I appreciate you tuning in. I'm always going to deliver the truth to you, unvarnished, unabashed. I'm going to give you the things here that you're not going to hear really anywhere else. So make sure to follow me on social media, like and subscribe to this podcast if you enjoy it. Share it with some of your friends. We're getting a lot of traction. Uh, I really think this thing is going to blow up um, because I, I, I know that people are starving for this type of content. It's not always going to be uh, easy to listen to. It's not always going to be encouraging necessarily. But to me, it is the essence of patriotism to tell people the truth and to, to, to shake people out of their slumber so we can pivot and we can go try to build something new for ourselves and for our posterity. Here, our audience is God in history. We're not doing this for the clapping seals. We're not doing this for ratings. We're not doing this... Um, you know, for the applause of the crowds. We're doing this to build something for ourselves and our posterity. And because we're all going to stand before the Almighty one day and give an account of what we did. And I'm not going to sit back and say that, you know, I, I didn't say what was in my head before I was dead. So until next week, uh, God bless, and we'll talk to you next time.